गुड इवनिंग नमस्कार एंड थैंक यू वेरी मच रिस्पेक्टेड डिग्नेटरीज एंड फ्रेंड्स स्पेशली यंग फ्रेंड्स इन द ऑडियंस आई एम हियर टू टॉक अबाउट अ मॉलिक्यूल डी एन ए डी ऑक्सी राइबो न्यूक्लिक एसिड दो आर नॉट इवन फ्रॉम बायोलॉजी बैकग्राउंड मोस्ट ऑफ द पीपल नो दैट डी एन ए इज द बेसिस ऑफ लाइफ एज द प्रीवियस वीडियो यू सो वॉट आर द ह्यूमन क्वालिटीज एंड द बेसिस ऑफ ऑल बायोलॉजी एंड हेल्थ एंड डिसीज इन ह्यूमन बींग्स इज अ डी एन ए मॉलिक्यूल विच इज वेरी क्लोज टू माई हार्ट सोल ब्रेन एंड ऑल्सो सारी एज यू कैन सी हियर द डी एन ए मॉलिक्यूल is present in every cell of our body any building is made up of bricks and our body any of any living being plants animals is made up of small cells which even our eyes cannot see and in each cell which is usually smaller than size of 0.02 mm about 2 meter long dna molecule is tightly packed in each cell and it is everywhere in each cell of your body and that dna molecule has these components adenine cytosine guanine and thymine and these you can call beads and these beads are woven into a long strands and the sequence of these atgc molecules really tells how your uh, organs uh, how they are made and how do they function so naturally even if there is a single change in the nucleotides and there are many because all of us look different behave different and have different diseases so there are many nucleotide differences amongst us if you take mine and others there will be one every 1000 nucleotides there will be a change but sometimes some are very critical so the uh, uh, that prototype of genetic disease is sickle cell disease which is not new to indian population and um, uh, especially for nagpur the structure of dna which is a double helix was deciphered by watson and crick 70 years ago and uh, even before that 150 years ago uh, there was an austrian monk gregor mendel and he did experiments on the characters of a pre plant like color of the flowers and height of the tree plants etc and deciphered and made found out some rules which these characters follow when they go from one generation to the other and later on we found that all these genetic diseases like sickle cell disease spinal muscular atrophy now everybody on facebook knows this disease they follow the same Mend same mendel's laws while they are transfer from one generation to another so these mendel's laws and the ability to study dna both of them gave rise to a specialty called medical genetics because now this information can be used for patients and families with the genetic disorders i am today very happy to talk about this medical genetics specialty in nagpur not only because nagpur is the center of our country but it is the center of my universe i was born and brought up and educated up to md pediatrics in nagpur and at that time there was no medical genetic specialty but i did my md thesis on radiological changes in sickle cell disease uh, but after this uh, that time there was no medical genetics over last 35 uh, 40 years now the genetics is everywhere we know that somebody gets adverse effect with one drug other person does not get adverse effect and the reason is variation in the genes cancer is a genetic disease you know story of angelina jolie and many other more people so uh, why somebody gets tuberculosis why somebody are resistant to hiv or uh, aids infection so there is genetics everywhere and now genetics is the center of medicine so at this point of time 
uh, I have chosen a part of medical genetics which is prenatal diagnosis because medical uh, genetic disorders there are 5000 of them are there and many of them are difficult to treat untreatable or associated with mental physical handicap and then naturally the families who are unlucky to have such children or likely to have such children want to have an assurance that their next child would be normal and will not have the same handicapping or serious disorder and hence the option is that you take the family history and then uh, study the baby in the mother's womb during next pregnancy and by three months of uh, pregnancy if you can tell whether the baby in the womb is healthy or has the same disease then one can really um, go ahead and the family can decide to terminate the pregnancy to avoid birth of another child with the disease. So I have chosen this because reproduction is close to everybody's heart. And uh, what I said, I was in Nagpur, but in 1989, for some sequence or events destiny, I was catapulted to Lucknow, a place in Uttar Pradesh. So in 1989, Uttar Pradesh was considered not so developed state. But at that particular time, uh, an important milestone in the history of medicine in India was being laid in Lucknow. There was Institute of Sanjay Gandhi, Postgraduate Institute of Medical Sciences was coming up there. And there my mentor and teacher, late Professor S.S. Agrawal, had vision four decades ago to start the medical genetics department institute and uh, I joined as first PM students of medical genetics there and this was the beginning of medical genetics in India uh, at that time as I said there are 5000 serious handicapping disorders so genetic counseling and prenatal diagnosis was the mainstay of our uh, practice as we were trying to establish these facilities and trying to help the patients and families in the um, in the uh, in the state uh, we realized that with large population of India even those rarest of the rare genetic disorders were many in India and with open eyes when we started seeing the patients we uh, described many new disorders as well as identified causative genes for these disorders and published uh, and contributed to the science and uh, of medical genetics as we were uh, doing all this we were learning and we were teaching and uh, during those last uh, more than three decades uh, what you can see the arrows on the map of India those are medical genetic centers headed by our alumni and my students and that has, has helped to establish this specialty in India. Then, uh, uh, as I said, as this, pro this everything was progressing very rapidly, the medical genetics um, uh, technology was advancing and the Human Genome Project was completed in 2003. So this brought up a technology where now anybody of you can get your all 3 billion nucleotides in, in your genome sequenced in India within a period of 15 days. And um, if the important 5000 genes which cause the disease, various diseases, they can be sequenced as an affordable price of just rupees 20,000. So um, for 5000 genetic disorders, this became a boon started using this technique for identification of etiologies. For example, uh, if there is a child with very small head and mental retardation, intellectual disability, the causative genes are thousands and the best of the clinicians may not be able to make diagnosis by just looking at the patient. And this test of testing all 5000 genes in one go can identify the causative uh, defect in the family and help the family by providing prenatal diagnosis. So as I can say, tell you that here for prevention of these disorders, the option is termination of the pregnancy if the fetus is affected and this is really acceptable if the disorder is severe enough but legally termination of pregnancy is possible by 20 weeks and recently it changed to 24 weeks but sometimes the diagnosis gives pleasant surprises like we have a family with 
two uh, children labeled as cerebral palsy, which all of you know. And on testing their genes, we identified that they have a disease which can be easily treated with a dis drug called dopamine. Or sometimes there are some treatment is only few shots of caffeine per day. So such pleasant surprises are there, but mostly the disorders are difficult to treat and then the, uh, for prevention, the family may have to take unpleasant decision of termination of pregnancy. Now the question is that as the technology improves, the, we can detect whether the baby is deaf, the baby in the womb is deaf, whether it has very small minor anomalies like um, cleft palate lip which are easily treatable, club foot which is easily treatable, but now you can detect them prenatally and many families suddenly they feel very shock of life and uh, some of them may feel that this also calls for termination of pregnancy. Recently, we had a family who had the baby uh, uh, in the womb showed that the chin was very, very small. So, these babies, sometimes they may have some serious handicap in disease. But on uh, investigation, the baby's genome was normal and did not have any abnormality. But sometimes the family is, everybody is different and their reaction was that we don't want any defect in the baby. And <clears throat> unfortunately, they got decided to terminate the pregnancy. And secondly, you might have seen court cases that the baby has some abnormality of heart rate and the family goes to the court that we want to terminate the pregnancy at uh, eighth month of gestation or ninth almost completion of uh, pregnancy. So these, these are very ethically debatable decisions. <clears throat> and uh, then um, because as you know, as soon as the baby is born and baby develops some problem, the family is ready to spend a lot of money, go from, goes from pillar to post to really treat the baby. But just because the, some disease is detected when the baby is in mother's womb, it's, is it really justified termination? This question always families are facing and these are ethical and psychological dilemmas. <clears throat> Similarly, the test which I said, if you can test all 5,000 um, genes in one go, and suddenly you target to find information that you may develop Parkinsonism or some treatable or untreatable disease at 60 years of age or you are found to have a mutation or gene defect which makes you susceptible for sudden death or you are susceptible to cancer. Does the patient wants to find out or the, even many times in addition to children we test their normal parents for comparison and whether they would like to know such information or not. Whether doctor should tell this information to the patient and put him into dilemma, so whether it will be useful or not. Many companies are providing direct to consumer testing of genome and telling that it will be useful to identify your risk for heart disease and so on. So which test is clinically meaningful and beneficial for the patient? This is a very debatable thing and has opened up many, many ethical dilemmas in front of the society. <clears throat> so now this is again happening because the diagnostic power has increased tremendously. The treatments are improving like gene therapy for sickle cell disease, gene therapy for hemophilia, spinal muscular atrophy are there. But the costs are like 16 crores and many more. But the main thing is the pace of identifying treatments is not that fast. And this gives the families, parents high control over their babies in the womb and their genome and they want to decide what type of baby they would like to want and which type of uh, disorder they would go for termination. So this type of uh, problem I feel is something like uh, once you know the diagnosis but you cannot treat. It's something like I feel is Abhimanyu knowing that how to enter the chakra view but you cannot come out and then you again face whether the baby should be terminated and the family may even sometimes terminate the pregnancies for variations of unknown significance. You find some genetic difference but that may or may not go into develop into disease. 
<coughs> these are the issues which we i want to highlight in front of the society where the people are there from different background because not only medical geneticists or scientists but the whole society leaders from various parts mothers would be mothers families teachers and social scientists all of them need to look at this marvelous technique which is going to be very useful and is useful now after a few years now it's technically possible but soon it may happen that every baby as soon as is conceived or born you have the whole genome report available with you so this will put forth many many dilemmas in front of everybody and this is uh, is necessary that society becomes aware of these issues and uh, then help and to make a decisions which are right for the society and takes care of the rights of the baby in the womb the whole technological advancement should be for the betterment of the society and should not harm the fabric of ethics of the society and should not cause dent in the uh, kavach or the shield of the mother's love for the baby in the womb and for this i think uh, you need to be aware read all about this and what is the need of the time is genetic literacy amongst the general population thank you very much